this one. Then it is also unimpeachable. You can trust it with your life. Ahava is right there in the heart of the Song of Solomon. Don't you want this kind of love, ladies? Huh? Gentlemen, would you not want to offer this kind of love to that special someone? Unquenchable, unstoppable, unquantifiable, unchangeable, and it's unimpeachable. You cannot dislodge it. It remains true to its covenant. This is the kind of love Song of Solomon would like you to understand and exercise in your romantic relationships. Now, let's read that book just to show you on the first one, Unquenchable Love. Let me show that to you. If you didn't bring your Bible with you, I'm putting it on screen. It's in Song of Solomon, chapter 8. And I'm looking at verse 7. Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 7. This is what it says. Many waters cannot... Come on, let's read it all together. Ready? Read. Many... Come on, come on. Let's read it all together. Louder. Ready? Read. Many waters cannot quench love. Rivers cannot sweep it away. The Hebrew word rendered quench is to extinguish. Like that water over fire. Can you imagine? No matter how much water you pour into it, it will never quench the fire of love. Would you like to have that kind of love? You remember the altar of Elijah on Mount Carmel? It was poured, uh, to it was poured gallons and gallons of water around it. As he prays, the flame and fire of the Lord consumed the sacrifice, including the stones and the water around it. And everything was turned or were turned into dust. That is the kind of fire that comes with the passion of love. It cannot be quenched with water. Yan yung mga tipong kahit ilang beses mo ng frenent zone, they will still offer the gesture of kindness, help, and affection. Rivers cannot sweep it away. Yan ba pag-ibig mo, dads? Cannot be quenched. Can you imagine that? Ladies, how would you desire to have and receive that kind of love? Unquenchable. Minsan, nakakainis din, ano? Pagbalik ng balik sa dorm. But be very careful, ladies, lest you think, lest you think that his love is unworthy of your beauty and excellence. Baka pagdating ng panahon, you will realize that this is the kind of love you're looking for. After all. So wag lang nakatingin dun sa mga six-pack abs. Yung mga kotse na dinadrive nila. Or probably the square jaw and the dimples. There is more to that. That kind of unquenchable love fires with passion. Because it seeks to give. 
Its purpose is to give. Its desire is to add blessings to the object of His or her love. I'd love to think that the Shulamite lover in this book has so much to say about this unquenchable love. It's nice to know that the Song of Solomon opened up with fireworks. It didn't go somewhere else. It went straight to the point. Come on. Let's try to look at what characterizes the unquenchable love. Why is it so unquenchable? You will understand what will truly make your love unquenchable is your relationship with God. But here, she points out implicit statements that will allow you to understand what makes an unquenchable love. Would you like to follow me? Let's look at the first chapter of the Song of Solomon. First chapter. If you didn't bring your Bible with you, let me see if I can put that on screen. There. Tomorrow, bring yours, okay? I wouldn't put anything there. It's nice to read it from the Bible. Let me read that for you. The Shulamite lover, the woman here, okay? This covers the period of their courtship. This courtship is seen as to be leading towards marriage. That's why, ladies, whenever you give your yes to a love covenant, what you should have in mind is the end of marriage. Are you with me? You are thinking of marriage and not just going around the water lilies. If you're not yet ready for marriage, there is no reason to offer your re yes in a covenant relationship. Because in it comes with all and your entire being. You promise yourself to that relationship. So look at the words of this woman. She said, this is from a woman, okay? This is not from Solomon. She said, let me, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Did you hear that? For your love is more delightful than what? Than wine. The rendering in the Hebrew, if it will be translated literally, will say, keep on kissing me. Not just once, but many times. Keep on kissing me. This is not just a peck on the cheek, as others would think of beso beso. This is a kind of kiss that is so passionate. Because it's not only in the lips, but where? In the mouth. There is an exchange, even with their spit and saliva. You see, when you describe kissing, it doesn't make much sense. It seems to be messy. Am I right? But if you experience it, you forget about the entire mess. So you don't describe kissing. You experience it. It is unquenchable because it comes with kisses. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on until I finish this one. Chapter 8 amplifies chapter 1. And beginning and end. And it goes on a chiastic structure. You know what I'm trying to say, dads? So, eight amplifies the one. In order for you to understand what is unquenchable love, is to understand it in the perspective of the Shulamite, Shulamite woman, the lover of Solomon. She said, kiss me, kiss me, kiss me, the kisses of his mouth, not lips, mouth. Imagine how God designed love to be unquenchable. 
what he does first is to come with this love, the kissing. When we kiss, sorry for you, for the unmarried, for the married, when we kiss, there are at least 12 cranial nerves that are ready to participate. Six are very much involved. Can you imagine that? God designed you to kiss. It gives you the capacity to love as God wants you to love someone. So it's unquenchable because all of the senses are participating. Look, even more. Let's read it. Pleasing is the fragrance of your perfumes. Now, it is not just tasted, but it is also what? Smelled. You see, you taste, now you what? You smell. There is with that special scent that comes to make love unquenchable in its passion. See? Pleasing is the fragrance of your perfume. Why is it that the perfume business has become a big industry? Because it comes with love. There are particular perfumes that elucidate or elicit erotic love. Kaya, ladies, it's important for you to be fragrant. Hindi amoy putok. You should be very careful that your hygiene will allow you to what? Keep the fragrance that is alluring to that special someone when the right time comes along. Even to husband and wife, this scent is as e it's equally important in the relationship as kissing. No wonder perfumes allow that experience to be more. These ladies would often put a small pouch tied around their necks, hanging between their breasts to allow such fragrance to, per fragrance to permeate even in the act of sex. Fragrance contributes to the love relationship, to the physical act, and makes that love unquenchable. It cements the relationship. You see, all this romance cements the relationship. You see, all of your senses participate now. You have the sight. What comes next? The kissing, which is your touch and probably your taste. Eh kung ang huling kinain niya na ay gluten, There is also that one. Third is the smell. You also what? Smell. All of your senses participate in the act of love. It makes it unquenchable. But let me end with this. Our text says, your name, your name is like a what? is like a perfume poured out. Do not leave out the word name because the name tells us of a character. The name in the scriptures given to sons and daughters often come, often come with significance to their what? Attitude to where they came from or how they were born. Character comes with the name. 
while all of your senses will participate in engaging in love. It appears that the woman never forget the importance of character. Are you with me, students? It includes the importance of character. Character that will put everything in perspective. Oftentimes, Solomon, in his writings in Proverbs, would often say that character is more precious than jewels. Ladies, do not settle for anything less than a righteous character after God. While you may be tempted to engage your senses into these aspects of love and act of love, smell, taste, sight, touch, the Shulamite lover reminds us that character still has the best place to determine your choice of love. Yes, the Shulamite woman was ready to give a hava in a covenant relationship that will be unquenchable until the time that God affords it. So, Jorbe, all of this we can do right now in courtship, kissing, smelling. Well, in the same book on the second chapter, you look at verse 6. The Shulamite woman has this to say, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not arouse, or what? Awaken love until it is, it so desires or pleasant. The Hebrew word translated desires or pleasant seem to allude to a right time favorable to express all the senses to an unquenchable love. It seems that there is a right time for this to be aroused. Not probably at that time when she was dreaming of that love with her lover. But she knew that in God's calendar, there was a perfect timing to experience all of this. So again, I encourage you lovers out there to prepare yourself for this grand time when you can offer yourself a hava to that special someone and cement your relationship and your romance in an unquenchable love. Only if you know God's timing and His perfect love in your life. There seemed to be a very clear understanding to this Shulamite woman that she is dreaming this all to happen when Solomon can put her upon his arms with his right hand and cuddles her with his other hand in a foreplay of romantic relationship. But there is a time for this. She said to all the daughters of PIC and AUP, do not arouse or what? Awaken love until it is favorable, it is pleasant, or so desires. Are you with me, friends? God wanted you 
to have best love in your life. But you need to wait for the north and the south winds to blow upon your love. Do not put things in a hurry. As you dream of that day, prepare yourself for the best thing you can offer in Ahava is yourself and your relationship with God. Do you think while you are here in AUP, you're ready for Ahava in this context of Song of Solomon? Let me ask you straight. Do you think you're ready for Ahava in this context of Song of Solomon? Or you are arousing and awakening love not yet ready for its time? Anyone? Do you think you're ready for this kind of romantic relationship? If not, then pray to God that He prepares you for the time when the right person comes around. You see, friends, do not base that love only in what you can see, taste, smell, or touch. Look at the name, the character that comes with the person. It is when you begin to realize that you are moving towards the same direction, that your ultimate goal is heavenward, that you share the same passion of serving the true God, the author of true love, then God will prepare you for that time. Remember, Ahava. Just before we leave tonight, one thing more. Solomon calls his beloved in Hebrew for ladies out there the Shulamite woman called her beloved Dodi in Hebrew malapit sa dad sano pero hindi Dodi Then, for the women, Solomon called the Shulamite woman, Rayati. Rayati. Who is your Dodi? Who is your Rayati? Have they come into your life now? Are you ready for Ahava? These are vital questions we need to answer. So why love? Why love? Because God designed you to love. God gave you love to share to others. It is in Him that love can be complete. Until the next session, we're here. Pray for your Dodi and Rayati tonight that your Ahava will be complete when the right time comes. For our closing song, shall we all rise up and sing our theme song, Only Jesus.
Before I pray, before make sure you get a copy of this uh, uh, rating of uh, the characteristics of Ahava. So you get to understand if you have that Ahava with you. So I don't know where are these copies. Are there? As you exit, you can get a sheet and uh, go through it and bring it tomorrow when we move to the next session. Let's pray. Father God. Thank you for the gift of love. Thank you for giving your only begotten Son that we may know what true love is. May we establish that relationship first with you so that we may share it to that someone you have prepared to be lifelong commitment. Bless us, dear Lord, as we leave this place. Continue to inspire us with your Holy Spirit. And that tonight, we may find our renewed strength in you for the challenges that are ahead of us. Thank you. 
that there is power in prayer. Thank you that you're listening to our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen.